What's up everybody, Brian Manning here, Hands On Hour Training. Here we have another Transit. This is a 250, this is a 2015 I believe. And uh, we have the same issue that we had with the other one that we were working on. I want to show you, I did not get in and do a uh, code scan yet, but I got here and the battery was disconnected like this. And just like the other vehicle, the shifter plate is up. So we have a, a similar uh, type of issue going on here. I'm going to go ahead, the key is in the off position, and I'm going to go ahead and hook up the battery. And I'll show you what all happens here. So with the battery hooked up like this, uh, you can see the hazards are on and they won't turn off. I don't think this one has the headlights on. The other vehicle that I was working on definitely had headlights that were stuck on. This one doesn't. We only have hazards stuck on here. But I'm going to get Ford IDS uh, fired up and start this thing trying to do its uh, uh, pre-scan here. And while that's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the rest of what I have going on. I have that other Ford Transit that's a 2017, did a very similar thing. The story here is they were driving down the road and this thing uh, just turned off, like literally turned off, and the hazards turned on. Uh, it does crank, I'm going to show you that in just a second. This is kind of interesting, let's just get our Ford IDS session actually going here. And uh, once I get this started, let's go, come on Ford IDS, start new session, all other, and yes. So once that starts, we're going to see, it may or may not communicate with the PCM. Let me go ahead and turn the key to the run position so I can show you what's happening here. I should have had a key on first. Uh, so there's a key in the run position. The center display does light up. Uh, this does have what appears to be an aftermarket backup system in here. And uh, I might have to restart my vehicle ID here because I don't know what's going to happen. But I do want to show you, we do not have a check engine light in the run position. So this is key off. This is a key on. Of course, I turn the hazards off, on and off. Nothing changes. If I go to crank, you will see that we do get a check engine light that flashed on and off, and the vehicle continues to crank here. So we get an oil pressure light. Uh, let's see here. We get a check engine light that flashes on and off. We get an oil pressure light and a battery light when we turn the key to the run, or should I say crank position. So this is interesting stuff. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna try and restart my ID because I think that uh, I messed up and didn't have the key on. Actually, I know I didn't have the key on. So this is quite interesting. I'm gonna poke around and see if I see anything obvious uh, around here. Let me go ahead and turn the key back to the run position. This is quite interesting because we're having the same exact situation or very similar that we had before. So maybe this will go, there we go. I didn't have the key on, so once it tries to communicate, we're gonna go ahead and start off with a complete vehicle uh, DTC scan. So we're going to hit yes, and then we're going to go to the red toolbox up here. Once it lets us, and we'll start our DTC scan. This is quite, quite the interesting scenario we've been having going on here. Um, I really don't know if they hit any bumps or anything like that going down the road. I'm going to hit the check mark over here. And we're going to hit the red toolbox, start our vehicle self-test. And if this thing has a U3000, colon 49 oh boy I don't know what we're gonna say um, <laughs> I have not fixed that other one I don't know what to do with it it had a body control module replaced I think I've talked to you guys about it I probably have like three hours of footage that I just have not even edited because I haven't gotten to that point yet of knowing what the vehicle is if it's fixed or not or what's going on so I'm really curious to see what happens here and if we have any clues as to what's going on as long as the shop didn't erase our codes maybe we can see which output is shorted if this is a u3000 colon 49 you'll see that uh, there's a lot of information saying that if we have a oh yeah there it is there's our u3049 but we also have a couple other codes in our body control module that might lead us you'll see this u3049 if you go into description and operation Okay, I've got my internet fired up and we've got all that open. I actually ID this uh, by the VIN. So this is a 2015 Transit 250 with 3.7 flex fuel. So if I type in the uh, U3000 colon 49, this is already in my history because I've had this problem before. <laughs> if you go to system and operation, first I want to show you that there's a lot of different modules that could set this code and they have some testing and inspection and all kinds of stuff here. But what the thing to check out here is under this description and operation, there's a lot of great information here. And if you scrolled way down, because I've, like I said, I've been to this barbecue before, I've already been here. 
under the field effect transistor protection, um, this FET protection, they talk about this U3000 will set, and it sets if it, there's any overloaded circuits. They say the DTC U3049 cannot be cleared uh, once the number of short circuit fault events is uh, uh, set. And uh, basically, that's kind of like rough. If you ask me, that's not giving us a lot of clues. But what we do have here is our pre-scan report that has the codes that may be causing our issue. So we got this cabin set reset switch, B10B1, okay? I don't know what this is. And then we also have a hazard switch, signal stuck low. Well, guys, the hazard stuck low, that's interesting. And let's see what other codes we have. I think it's really important to take a lot of uh, look around here. Invalid data received from body control module in our ABS. And there's our cabin reset. What's the RCM say? Invalid data received from the body control module. So maybe this isn't much to lead us on. We got a hazard switch and we have a, a what was it? The cabin reset switch. Uh, cabin set reset set switch. I don't know what that is. I'm going to take a look around and identify and also all data. But before I do that, I want to go into my data logger and I want to show you something that is probably going to be the same. I haven't even gotten here yet. This is the first time I'm taking a look at this, but I want to show you there is a uh, a data page called Power Mode Quality Factor, which is something that I'm learning about and I don't know much about at all. Let me make sure that the key is in the run position. There you go. Key's on. Oops. Oh, check this out. Now my headlights are on and won't turn off. That's really interesting. Um, th this, this car, this is a very, very similar situation and I need to learn what on earth is going on. So I do have the key in the run position here. And uh, I'm going to have to get a maintainer on this in a little bit. That's a fact. So we're going into our body control module. I want to take a look at the uh, data pit called Power Mode Quality Factor. Um, there are a ton of, ton of data pits that they give us the selection here uh, on our Ford IDS. But I believe it's called po Power Mode Quality Factor. And that is right, right here, Power Mode QF. Um, let's take a look at these other ones. And uh, if you didn't pay attention to any of my other... Uh, videos. I believe I actually, I thought I said it, but on that other vehicle I'm working on, it has the same exact situation. Um, what happened was I would actually, uh, I took out my ignition switch out of my van and threw it in. Now this is power mode quality factor, power mode undefined. So the other one, I, I thought it said invalid. So let me go ahead and go to start. Let me go ahead, I'm going to turn the key off. Power mode is okay. This is accessory. It always says key out. Now, my vehicle, I believe, says this too, and there's nothing wrong with my vehicle yet. But we have power mode is okay. This is accessory. In run, it says power mode is undefined. In crank, power mode is okay. So we have an issue here where uh, power mode key, it says key's recently out, and the key is in the run position. Now, I really don't know uh, which way we're going to go here, but I'm going to take a look at that cabin switch. I think that was a cabin switch fault because I hadn't seen this one, B10B1. So we're going to go over to all data and we're going to type in B10B1 and see what we can find out. I have to up my game here because this has been some challenging times. B10B1 and we're going to hit the enter button. Okay, so maybe I typed that in wrong. B10B1 says no results found. B10 B1. That's awesome. I love when I get codes that don't pop up in our service information. Let me try this again. Let me try putting caps lock on B10 B1. And uh, it says it's searching. No articles found for B10 B1. Let's go over to Identifix, but before I do that, we're going to hit up here. We can go ahead and copy our VIN, Control C. So we copy our van, we'll go over to our Identifix tab here, and we're going to take a look uh, what we have. I mean, this is quite, quite the interesting job. All right, so I am in Identifix, and B10B1 does not come up with anything. And I want to make sure that I'm not uh, typing in wrong, guys, because uh, B10B1, right? Am I going crazy? Um, what is the cabin set reset switch? I don't know. 
Uh, you know, we've got our flower door locks. You know, this is a work van. It's a cargo van. And we got the cage and all that stuff. The other one was a passenger van. I don't know what a cabin reset switch is. I'm going to have to ask my Facebook friends maybe, see if anybody else knows. Um, we'll see. And I'm going to get back with you. All right, guys, just so you know, Identifix has a real nice article um, on testing uh, the circuits here, and they're telling you even the, what, where the back probe uh, for this connector. So to get this connector in a position so I can back probe it, I have to take off the, the cover, which is a challenge. I broke the one tab. That happens sometimes when you're doing this type of stuff. What are you going to do? Um, but we got to get in here, and i got to get these slides out so I can actually push the connector on all the way. So... have you guys sitting right here maybe you'll be able to see me do this I'm not sure I'm sure it's hard to see sometimes but I'm just gonna go ahead I had to pop this out, out past a certain point and just so you guys know I mark these I actually mark the connector this is the way I took it out and um, and this is mark B for brown and I'm gonna put a little mark here just so I have uh, I know which way it goes. This can get confusing sometimes and time consuming to put these things back together if you don't have a lot of experience with them. And it just really does make it a whole lot easier to uh, mark some stuff so you don't get stuck. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and yank this thing out of here. Like I said, they can be a little tedious sometimes, these connectors. So those little plastic things really cause trouble. Now, I can go ahead and plug this back into the body control module which is up in here and now I should be able to hopefully have enough room to be able to uh, back probe and I kind of looked at my terminals so I know where they're at at this point and as I plug this in you can hear uh, the hazards turn back on uh, we're back to our situation here and if I go ahead and turn the key to the run position we still have a crank no start but uh, we're right back to where we started from. Now I can go in there and test these uh, terminals that we're talking about. I also looked it up on um, all data, trying to get a little bit of a, of a clearer view here. So I do have, uh, I know that 75 and 76 are two that I want to be going to. Ignition run, uh, ignition run switch, ignition run switch accessory. So uh, taking a look here, scrolling up, this ignition run switch uh, is actually run and start and that is the brown and yellow and maybe you guys will be able to see maybe not it is a little challenging to get up in there all right so we are on the brown and yellow and this is with a key off you have very low voltage or nothing really reading there and brown and yellow on this picture here terminal 76 what should that be let's zoom out a little bit maybe make this easier to see everything at once It'd be awesome well maybe not we can go up here and you can see that this should be in run and start. We should have voltage on this brown and yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and put the key in the ignition. Uh, this is, let's see, this is accessory. This is run, you can see, and then this is start. So we got good voltage there. I am going to have to get a maintainer on this thing. Guys, you always tell you have a maintainer on it. It's just very difficult to try to do in this situation but let's just go ahead and check our next one let's check our the one right down from that so you can see let me see if I can get the light so you guys can see I am way uh, you can see my terminal my little black lead that's back probing into that I gotta go to the next one down from that which is the violet and green I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that right quick and I'll try to uh, get you guys back up there so you can see because this is the stuff that I think a lot of technicians struggle with is actually getting nitty and gritty, making it happen to get in there and test. That's the hard part. If it was easy, everybody would do it, right? That's what I keep on telling myself. So, all right. Now, right now, I have like a trace voltage. It was kind of interesting. It kind of went down. Uh, it's slowly going down. This is with the key off, key out. Here is, actually, I didn't show you guys. Uh, Little focus in there, maybe you can see or not. I'm back probe, my, my little uh, wire is going right down there to my meter. So we got the key out, 
here's accessory. There is rung. Actually, accessory, I take that back. This is key out. There is accessory, there is rung, and there is crank. So I got three point something volts in cranking. It slowly goes down. That's kind of odd. I don't know why that is. Um, the other vehicle I think may have done the same thing. The voltage just is kind of a trace. But let's see what Identifix says it should have because I'm going to listen to what they say. Um, they say that terminal number 75 should have power with a key in the accessory ex position. Well, I have key power with a key in accessory and run here. Because, wait a second, so I have, that's accessory, so that's off, and it slowly goes down. There's accessory. There's, no, I don't have an accessory here. This is interesting, so there's run. This is accessory, and I still have, okay, so that's run accessory there's like a long space in between on and off here uh, I don't know what may be happening let me take a look at uh, this diagram on Identifix because we're or I mean this one's an all data we're on the pink wire here make sure I'm on the same terminal at 75 going up to the pink or it's violet and green that should be accessory and run. So is what this one should be hot according to this diagram. And I trust this diagram here. Let me try that again. So there's accessory, there's run, and we have voltage present where we should. Now it does trace down. This is kind of interesting how this goes down like this. Um, I'm about to add a circuit here. Um, I'm about to add right into my little circuit. I'm gonna put like a little 194 bulb and just see if uh, putting that to ground, if that pulls down that voltage really fast. I'm really curious to see what happens. Dang it, okay, so that blue and white's not getting the signal that I expect it to be. I think I may have a bad connection or I'm not getting up there properly. So we're gonna take a look and try to see one more time. I might have to do some pierce probing, which is okay because this is inside the vehicle. And if you saw that connector is not even a weather pack connector, it's pretty, pretty wide open. Um, which to me means that we don't have to worry about it because whatever we miss is gonna go on the other side. All right, so there you go. I do have the battery voltage while we're cranking. I just had a bad connection. So we do have that. And I'm gonna continue going down the path that Identifix has us doing because I'm kind of out of ideas on these vehicles that are kicking my tail. I got two of these things. So we tested this, this, and this, all good. And then this last one in the next row over uh, says should get power with a key in the ignition. No power, if no power, apply power and see if the concern's gone. Now that one I wanna tell you about, it seemed like the one said it should only have power uh, in the, uh, which one? Should only have power with the key on. I think I had accessory and key, and that's what the, the diagram on uh, all data shows. So hopefully I'm not getting mixed up information here. All right, and the next one we're gonna check, the last one we're gonna check is this key and ignition switch. Um, this one is a blue and gray. And that goes from terminal five of our ignition switch all the way down to the BCM, terminal 62. And if you look on Identifix, uh, their little uh, chart that they're helping us out do here, this should only have power in with the key. Actually, I'm sorry, I'm going to scroll up. I'm looking for one. This should get power with the key in the ignition. Uh, if no power, apply power and see if the problem's gone. So let's go ahead and get up in here and see where that guy is. It's gonna be one over, gray, white. Next row over, I'm gonna to have to put you guys down, but I'll talk to you so you can hear me have fun here. Uh, this is a good time, if nothing else. I think this will be it. Okay, so gray, yep, one over, and it's just after the other one. I want to show you how I'm kind of locating this stuff in, in a certain way. It's kind of like I'm uh, 
I look at the diagram, I can see which cavities are empty, and then I can help pinpoint where I want to be. So this is supposed to have power with the key in the ignition. I take it out, and we have a little bit of a trace voltage that goes away. Put the key in the ignition, turn it to run, crank. Uh, we maintain that until we take the key out. So all this looks good. This is very similar to the other vehicle I had. The one that I, I think I was mixed up on here um, is one said it should have power with the key on. Let me test the 75 and 76 again. I think they, um, I kind of got something messed up there where I had some stuff going on I shouldn't according to this uh, information. However, looking at the all data diagram, everything that I'm doing, uh, whoop, wrong button, everything I'm doing looks all right. So I'm gonna have to see here. There's really not a lot of inputs. I mean, this is just not so much going on. We've got one, two, three, four inputs and our power quality mode factor is always invalid. This is just gonna be baloney. Testing one, two. All right, guys, I'm trying to look at simple things to see if I can narrow something down here. This headlamp hazard switch says press in all the time. Right now, I lost communication because I unplugged that uh, big connector. I think it's C2280D, maybe. Hold on. Uh, whatever this connector is, it's the same one, I believe. And that is, uh, did I say? Yeah, C2280D. I'm getting too familiar with this vehicle here. Okay, I'm back. Had to get a fresh battery, but we are at the C2280D, and uh, this is for the uh, hazard switch. I'm trying to make sure that I have a good connection here. So, guys, guys, when you're doing this type of testing, it's so important to make sure we're getting a good connection. So, that's what I'm going to do right now. All right, guys, I'm not able to show you, but I was having a bad connection. I have to really press this in here. I have my uh, meter connected just for ohms just to test to make sure I've got a good connection. I might be able to show you, but um, there you go. So now I know I'm in this wire good with my power probe. Sometimes that thing will miss on these skinny wires and go sideways on us, so we can't have that. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug this back in, and as I plug it back in, you're going to see this thing go all haywire and wonky once again. That's what this does, and uh, I'm just pressing this in that connection. There we go. Our hazards are on. Everything's back up there. And I'm going to go ahead and hook up my meter to ground. Once I find my ground, i got a lot of wires out. This is what happens sometimes when you do this type of work, right? You get all kinds of craziness going on here. Let me find my meter lead, or my test lead. This is going to ground, and I'm going to verify, always, always verify that you have uh, good power uh, if you're testing for voltage, you know, I'm testing to ground. There we go. You can see i got a maintainer on this now. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and hook this to my, my lead here. And this is interesting because this circuit is showing low. Um, and when a hazard switch is depressed, it doesn't change. So I'm definitely on the circuit. Um, the best I can tell, I'm about to cut this wire. I hate to cut a wire, um, but I want to verify that nothing else is going on up in there. I want to see if, if our voltage uh, goes high, because it very well could be just a shorted hazard switch, which I'd be surprised about. And that was low down and dirty, but I cut it, and we're still on the uh, BCM side of this uh, switch, and it's showing low voltage all the time. And, uh, you know, whether or not we depress our hazard switch or whatever, we don't see a change. So I am on the body control model side. Now, what I'm going to probably do is hook up... Um, hook up my meter on the other side of the circuit. I'm going to clean it up so I can get onto the other side. And then I'm going to probably use the ohm meter with the audible scale thing to see whether we have continuity when it depress the hazard switch. Because, you know, something's screwy. It's on the BCM side, I'm pretty sure, but we're going to verify that. And also, with this switch, uh, with this uh, hazard signal input uh, cut, that's the wire that you see sticking out right there. That wire is cut. Our data input on our BCM still says the hazard switch is pressed in. And that's false, my friends. Okay, guys, just to mess around and uh, check the uh, quality of my hazard switch circuit, 
This is the uh, leg that goes up to the hazard switch. The hazard switch is supposed to ground this. I put my multimeter on the audible scale so we can test this. Anytime we uh, uh, have a complete circuit, it should beep and you should hear it. There you go. So we're going to go ahead and hook this back up real quick. And guys, I'm sorry, I'm not going to edit a whole lot of this because I don't have time. But if I hit the hazard switch, which is over here, you can watch here that we will have a audible sound. Hopefully you can hear that. But you can see that the hazard switch is not pressed in all the time. All right, uh, I had the blessing of talking to a very smart person to help me out a little bit, and uh, we checked a lot of stuff. One of the things that's interesting is that the blower motor should come on with an accessory and key on, and it doesn't. But if we go ahead and to crank, you may not be able to hear, but the blower motor does come, out, come on. Uh, we checked a lot of our other inputs to this BCM, checking around a lot of stuff. And I'm at the point where uh, we're going to call a BCM on this. I'm going to take my chances. I am going to do a PMI with the new module already installed. So we're going to install this. If the shop sells it or sell this thing, I'm going to go ahead and install the new BCM, start a fresh session of IDS. I mean, 100%, I'll make sure we start a complete fresh session and there'll be no uh, traces of the old information here to pull over. Okay, so what's really interesting is I actually bought the Ford uh, service information. I'm looking for that B101D uh, code or whatever the original code we had uh, that said cabin reset switch. I talked to some people, I couldn't find it. There's some Facebook friends that helped me out saying it had something to do with a driver's door. Uh, at least for a Ford Fiesta was like what they're showing. And check this out here. We have some broken and compromised wires here in this door. So this is going to have to get repaired. Uh, I'm just going to see if I can sell them a whole harness. I don't think they have a problem paying with whatever the price is, but I think we should probably check other doors on this as well to make sure nothing else is going on. But this is getting to be really interesting. We're about to get a BCM on this thing. I might even program the BCM with this unplugged and not plug it back in until we have this completely repaired, and then we'll see what happens. So guys, this is one of the times that I'm actually uh, having a great learning experience, <laughs> if you can call it that. I'm learning a lot about this system and how it works. Tested all the body control module inputs from the ignition switch. They all test out properly. I don't see any problems there. Um, like I said, I was on the phone with a couple really smart people. Um, I don't know if they want to be named, so I'll leave them out of it, but thank you. I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, finding the door harness is shorted. I, I had some Facebook friends that actually helped me out. Uh, like I said, finding a flow chart or some diagnostic information from a 2014 Ford Fiesta, I think it was, really interesting that that has that flow chart for that U uh, or the B101B or whatever that code was. Uh, that was a cabin reset switch it, that had popped up in the initial uh, code scan. That code didn't come back, but I think the BCM went into like its self-protection mode. So I'm really hoping that that's the problem with this. Uh, this is Tuesday here, Tuesday afternoon now. I spent a lot of time here. I'm not going to get paid for all this time. I'll tell you that right now. And I'm okay with that because I'm learning uh, as I learn, if you will, a little bit. Uh, but the BCM should be on Friday. We'll get back here. I am going to install the new body control module because I don't want to contaminate or if we have some sort of corrupt data inside of this body control module, I don't want to swap that over. Also, um, that body control module on the Transit 350 at the other shop I've been working on, uh, I'm wondering and I really think that there might be an issue where uh, that door switch was still shorted um, causing a problem okay so we programmed the new body control module maybe we did enough key cycles that it locked up the new bcm so they actually have a replacement bcm on order so i'll get to get out there and do that so i'm going to keep you guys posted with this u 3000 colon 49 the butt whooping code as i call it take care we'll see you guys soon